Hey everyone, it's Dr. Jen. I'm here on Custodio's Facebook page and I'm excited to be here. I hope a lot of you join me today. I um, have a lot to talk about and um, I guess I'll start with an introduction of myself so you who don't know me or are seeing me for the first time will know who I am and what I do. So my name is Dr. Jen Trachtenberg and I go by Dr. Jen. I'm a board certified pediatrician and assistant clinical professor of pediatrics at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. And I've been in private practice taking care of kids from newborn through uh, young adulthood for over 20 years now. So I've got a lot of experience taking care of kids. And my mission is really to help parents raise healthy, happy children. And I know that's like a really big thing, right? That's what we all want our kids to be healthy and happy. And really, it's to help parents make informed decisions about their child's health. There's so much information out there and misinformation. It's overwhelming. And I know parents, parents like you, there's a lot of anxiety and fear and stress about making the wrong decisions and making mistakes with your kids. So, And it's okay to make mistakes, but you really want to know when it comes to their health and wellness, you know, what you can do to help prevent disease and to prevent them um, not only being sick, but also promoting wellness and part of that has to do with the digital health as well too, and that's why I'm here on Custodio talking about that. Um, so yeah, so it really is important to know about um, habits in childhood. I really stress this a lot with parents, that your habits from childhood, they continue into your adult life and they have a huge impact on your overall health. And one of those um, habits that now is even more pervasive is digital use screen time with kids and we're learning more and more each year the research has shown um, that screen time it can be beneficial but too much can also be detrimental as well too and there's that fine line and balance and we really need to know about it because there are links um, with too much screen time and obesity um, lack of sleep um, inattention uh, decreased concentration when there's uh, too much screen time um, specifically learning and children when they're very young, it can inhibit that as well too, if they're just really trying to learn from screens instead of their environment around them. And also, yes, anxiety, um, depression, bullying, all these things can be impacted by too much or the wrong kind of screen time. So we're gonna talk about, that's why um, I'm gonna talk about it today, and that's why it's really important for parents to have a handle on what they can do. And yes, as a parent, you can make a difference um, with screen time and your children and their digital health as well. So um, I'm actually gonna give a shout out to Michelle Hadian. I hope I'm saying your name right, H-A-D-I-A-N. But you had this great question um, that you posted on the uh, Facebook page about how do you really balance uh, homework and digital screen time? So I'm really gonna talk about that comprehensively today so you guys can get some tips and some information um, about that and just want to also give her a shout out that she did win a subscription to Custodio and she will um, have that more information coming to her about that as well too so um, congratulations to you Michelle it's really exciting um, that you have won that but more importantly I'm so excited that you asked this great question so um, homework when it comes to kids so first of all um, one of the things I have to say is kids get way too much homework in most school districts, way too much. They don't have time to do other things. So we want to make their homework as efficient as possible. Um, some school districts now are using computers or they have um, iPads that they send home with the kids. Um, the good news about that is there's way less books, so it's not as hard on their back to carry in those books back and forth to school. Um, then they only have an iPad, but then obviously it comes with the issue of really using electronics so much and so often um, and how that can impact kids as well too. And so yeah, so kids do need to use it with their homework, right? So they may have to submit things online. Um, they may be working with other kids um, in their class or in different classes um, on group projects together. They may have to access the internet for research. And again, you wanna make sure that's done safely as well too. So we'll talk about that. Um, so yeah, so screen time may be part of homework, but what you want to eliminate is the screen time that's unnecessary. So a lot of that has to do with like social media. Even listening to music um, can be very distracting when doing homework. And um, things like answering emails and kids are answering their friends on Messenger and Snapchat and Instagram and just uh, you know looking at YouTube, all that can be really interfering when it comes to homework. Um, and why is it interfering? Well, obviously it's distracting. So if it's distracting, um, you may, your child may have a difficult time uh, 
with um, comprehension or understanding what they're doing. There's a lot of inattention going on, right? Um, it's way less efficient if they are keep checking their emails. And again, even if they you know put the ringer off, they still have evidence near them, their phone, they're still gonna turn over and look at it. And it just makes learning much more difficult. Um, and then the time it takes to do homework. So you're spending an enormous amount of time already on homework because there's so much that they're given in school, right? But now that they have this interfering uh, social media, things that they're doing at the same time or feeling like they can't miss a text. And so we want them to learn that it, that to delay gratification, right? That they don't need to check everything all the time. And a lot of that has to do with um, modeling and how you set up your home and social um, media as well as all digital media in your home too. So we're gonna talk about some tips and stuff too. But yeah, you really want to um, only concentrate on homework when it's homework time. It'll be more efficient, it'll be done faster and give you time to do other things as well too. So let's sort of just jump right into it. Let me give you some tips on balancing homework and digital screen time. So one of the most important things I think is to have a family media use plan. So it's like a digital health diet, um, one might call it. And really what that is, is really sort of the rules and, and regulations for the whole family. So for mom, dad, um, the siblings as well too, really a whole sort of written rules that um, the kids can go to that they really understand. It sort of takes the pressure off and you're not changing and you know taking away their phone or or saying that now they can't use the computer, they kind of already have a list um, of rules. And yes, they can change in the future, um, but it's sort of everyone is sort of protected and really knows what's going on. And you don't really need to invent the wheel if you don't really know what that means or how to have a media plan. Um, you can actually go to um, healthychildren.org. It's an amazing um, site from the American Academy of Pediatrics and go on to their um, media use plan. And it's amazing, you put in your child's age and their name and it helps you make a whole plan that you can have for your family. And everyone can read it and sign it, and um, obviously not if they're really young, but obviously the older kids too. And make sure they're all on the same page about media use in the family. It's a great tool to have. So that's number one. Um, number two is have an assigned homework area. So this is great to start off, especially when your kids are young, to have an assigned homework area where this is the place where they go to do their homework, they have all the things that they need, the pens, the pencils, computer, um, paper, whatever they need to do their homework. And it's great to do it in an area that is sort of a public area. Maybe it's the kitchen table or a small um, area in the living room that they can use. But it's a place where it's open um, and you're around too. So if you're around, it can be really helpful. Why? Um, you're there to help them um, if they have questions, right? You don't want to be doing their homework, but you want to be there for them. And if they have questions or concerns, you can be there to answer their questions. But also you can sort of oversee what's going on. If there is a computer that's being used, you can make sure um, that they're using it appropriately, that they're staying on task as well too. So you just want to make sure that they have an area to do their homework again, because if they're efficient and they, they can get it done with, it leaves more time to do other things that are important for their health and wellness as well too. Um, and then my third tip is to make sure that you have a designated computer for homework if necessary. So as I said, more and more um, schools that even at an early age are using computers or iPads for homework as well too. And so um, some districts, like my kids' districts, so they actually have iPads that they've been using for many, many years now. Um, and it's great to have there's pros and cons to that, but it's great that they have this one iPad that's just the school iPad because it already has a lot of restrictions on it. So it's only um, can use the sites that um, are needed for their school, that you, um, there's a lot, everything's restricted and blocked. You can't put apps on there anyway. Um, it's again, just for school. So they know that when they're using that, there's again, less distractions, um, making sure that they are doing their homework because this um, iPad is strictly just for school. And if you don't have that, obviously, um, you, and you have a home computer that your child is using, again, having parental control apps on it as well is really important. You wanna make sure like that the browser is a kid-friendly browser, that again, you can also then um, block sites that you don't want them to go to. But also, you know, timing is important too. So you obviously, as I said, it's important to make sure that they're not messengering or they're not checking or watching YouTube in between uh, math problems. So you can actually set time limits as well too, or time of the day. So if you have a homework time, which is also really important too, 
Um, you can also set limits and restrictions at that time so your child can really just concentrate on their homework. And um, so that's really good too. So a designated computer and having control um, of what they are able to access um, when they're doing their homework is really important too. And um, you know, one of the tips um, that my daughter does, and she's older now, but again, from all the years, she really just wants to concentrate on her homework. She's learned that it is better to do the homework and to concentrate on it um, and not to worry about the social media at that time. So she actually keeps her phone in a different room or goes into another area and that has no distractions at all so she can just get her homework done. So I'm really proud that uh, that really carried over as she uh, grew older as well too. So another tip that sort of kind of goes along with that is having a family phone basket. So a family phone basket is really just sort of an area or a basket that you have or a box where everyone puts their phones in um, at certain times of the day. So it's sort of a uh, digital media free zone. So for example, um, again, the homework time, even if you, your child says, oh, no, I'm gonna turn off the phone or I'm not gonna have the ringer on, um, it just having it down in front of them they're going to want to pick it up and they're going to want to look at it and they're going to get distracted. So if you have this phone basket where you put their phone in when it's homework time or when it's, uh, you know, you're doing other time eating dinner or things like that, it will cut down on um, sort of the stress and the bickering and the fighting and of having your child have to not look at their phone. So basically you take it away um, so it's not so reinforcing to have in front of them. And then this way, when they're done, you can just give it back to them. And so there can be certain times of the day after school when they are allowed to access and use their phone. You have to build that in. Um, and lastly, well, actually, actually I don't want to say lastly, I think I have two things I want to tell you. So um, I also think it's important to make times that are not using um, electronics as well. So things like dinner. So we know from um, health that it's so important to have family dinners and I get it like I work too, right? So you can't have family dinners all the time or maybe um, when you come home and it's early and you don't wanna eat yet but if you can sit with your child while they're eating, um, it's a great time for communication, to talk with your child. We know that there are healthy meals, kids eat better. Um, when they're not distracted and looking at their phones. And so you have to sort of make it a family thing, right? So no one can be using their phones. Um, certainly in my house, I'm not gonna lie, it can be harder because sometimes I'm on call. So what I do is I set up different phone rings. If it's a real emergency, obviously I have to get it. But if it's not, from a patient it's not an emergency, I will wait for the half hour or so and call them back then. So you have to figure out what works best for your family. But really, um, I encourage family meals to try to keep them low tech as possible talking, finding out what's going on with your child. Um, you can sort of make plans for the next day, um, but it's just sort of a great way to find out what's going on with your kids as well too. Um, and last, I'm just gonna bring up family um, a downtime also as well with, with, I'm gonna even say with or without electronics, but basically family time together. So it could be um, playing games, going back to board games. It's such a great way for kids to learn. Um, they can use um, their minds, they can be creative. Um, a lot of things can be like manipulative games too with building blocks if your kids are young or Legos as they get older. There's so many different things that you can do together. And when you're playing with them, they first may not want to do it, but they may then want to play more once they get involved and they see that you're doing it with them as well too. So it's great to try to carve that in as well too. And again, even a family movie night or watching TV is great. Again, watching it together is a great way to communicate as a family. Um, and you can also put in your thoughts about what you're seeing on TV, obviously, um, with your child and you know, talk about is it real and what are their thoughts on it. And again, it could be a big, big um, conversation opener as well too. So it's important to watch television together. Quality programming together is so important for families. So I know there's a lot when it comes to digital health um, and it can be overwhelming. So I hope these tips have helped to break it down to make it a little bit easier for you. Um, we are living in a world, a digital world, and it is just going to increase, but we have to figure out how to make it work for our families to keep them healthy and safe. This is Dr. Jen, and I will be speaking with you again soon. Have a great day.